Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I believe I've met most of you at one point or another, but for those of you whom I haven't met, my name is Eli Shmuel. I just finished my serving in the Israeli army for three years and came here to visit the American Karai Jewish community and the United States. It was a real honor to lead services today uh, to mark the causing of the 30 days of mourning for Madame Sheila Cohen, as known among us as the mouth of the Torah. I'm going to briefly discuss about the state of the Karai Jewish uh, community in Israel, and I'm going to do so through the eyes of a young, proud Karaite who wants nothing more than to see Karai Judaism thrive and flourish. We are on our way to doing that, but we have some challenges which, are, which I will discuss as we go through this 10-minute talk. So let's get started. Um, recently, there were published two articles that featured Karaite Judaism prominently. One of them was in The Economist, and it was called, Who is a Jew? It started with a question, when is a Jew not a Jew? When is a Karaite? The overall point of this article was to talk about how the religious rabbinic authorities in Israel have been oppressing the Karaite Judaism, the community in Israel. And that is true, and uh, I will talk a little about that today. And about the High Holidays, uh, the New York Times ran a story called New Generation of Jewish Sect Takes Up Struggle to Protect Place in Modern Israel. So uh, as its name suggests, the story emphasizes the Karaite Jewish resurgence that is currently taking place in Israel. And that is also true. And I hope to tell you a little bit about our activities in Israel. Um, okay, so I believe you can measure the strength of a community mainly by two things. Generally speaking, by a lot of things, but mainly by two things. One of them is its institutions. And the other thing is the involvement of its youth. So based on those criteria, let's uh, look at our community uh, on our brethren in Israel. Okay, so uh, since Jews love to eat, and most of, most of us like uh, to eat meat, and I apologize in front of my vegetarian friend, um, one of the most important institutions is a uh, butcher shop. And in Israel we have two main butcher shops. One of them is in Ashdod, and the other one is in Ramle. And Karai Jews uh, a lot of Karai Jews, and I among them, will only eat meat slaughtered according to the Karai Jewish standards. And I actually did a video explaining uh, a Karai uh, slaughtering, ritual slaughter. Uh, you can find it either on YouTube or uh, on our website, uh, karaite.org. Or in YouTube, you can just type Karaite slaughter, and probably it is going to be one of the main uh, first results. Anyway, Karai Jews uh, have been slaughtering and preparing their own meat for more than a thousand years. So you would think that it is not controversial. So, uh, but you see this sign here. It says our meat is kosher. This word in Hebrew, kosher. But uh, the religious authorities in Israel decided that it was misleading or somehow illegal to call our meat kosher because we do not follow certain non-biblical rabbinic traditions. Um, anyway, uh, we say clearly, it says clearly, uh, this is the exterior sign of Ramle Butcher Shop, and it says that in the, it is under the supervision of the Karai Judaism Rabbinate in Ramle, because this is in Ramle. So no way that it is misleading. But nevertheless, the rabbinic religious authorities find the owner of this butcher shop for using the word kosher, and the fine was 1,000 shekels. And the Karai Jewish community decided to fight the fine in court. The issue is not about the money. The issue is our rights as Karai Jews who follow uh, the biblical tradition, and the Karai Jews who want to keep our tradition to eat kosher meat and under our uh, supervision. Anyway, um, interestingly, uh, the court case pitted the Karaite 
Jewish community uh, against uh, the rabbinic religious authorities in front of a Muslim judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and finally, he ruled in our favor and, and we won. Um, anyway, this is one of many strong signals that our community will continue to fight for our religious rights and our status in modern state of Israel. What, what is really the difference? Yeah, I, we don't have time. I'm sorry, I don't want the people to starve, but uh, you can find this uh, on our uh, YouTube uh, video or on, uh, on our website, kerite.org. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry again. Anyway, one of the most important institutions, and now we'll be more serious, is of course uh, synagogues. So in Israel we have two communal centers and 14 synagogues uh, uh, all over the country through Israel. And why is that? Because both Ashdod and Ramle each have two synagogues. And by the way, uh, each synagogue, almost each synagogue in Ashdod, uh, in Israel, sorry, have uh, a big building, a big hall for uh, ceremonies and feasts and uh, activities for the community and uh, to bring them together. Um, so as you can see here, here's the distribution of our synagogues through Israel. Uh, for example, um, here in Ashdod, there, were built, there was built another synagogue in 2010. And in Rishon LeZion, which is a big city in Israel, there was built a new synagogue, our first synagogue in Rishon LeZion in 2011. And you see to the right, here is a Moshav Matzliach. This settlement is a Karaite settlement, and it was named after a Karaite uh, sage and philosopher whose name was Sahal ben Matzliach. Uh, I'm not going to talk about him, but uh, as you know, Matzliach is a family name, last name, uh, traditional name in our uh, community to this very day. Um, I know that several of you were born in, e in Egypt and used to pray in, used to pray in uh, this synagogue, Sage Moshe Aldari Synagogue in the Jewish quarter in Cairo. Um, I can tell you that uh, the old synagogue in Ashdod, to the right, is actually a replica of this synagogue. You can see the resemblance. And I encourage you all to come and visit it, and you will probably feel home. Um, yes, and uh, I used to pray in this synagogue uh, because I live in Ashdod and uh, I live close there. Anyway, uh, a little bit bittersweet point uh, which I'm going to talk about is our historic Jerusalem Karaite Synagogue. It is actually the oldest synagogue of any Jewish movement in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem. And as far as I'm aware, this is the oldest synagogue in the world that is still used as a place for Jewish worship. Okay, so we should be proud of that. Anyway, um, as you can see, according to the picture uh, to the right, this is the interior of this place. Um, the synagogue has been through a lot. It was destroyed in the Crusades and rebuilt. It was also destroyed in, 19, uh, in 1967 war in Israel. Uh, Milchemet Sheshet Ayamim. This is the name of the war in Israel and then it rebuilt again. So as you can see, um, repairs were and are badly needed. And there is also a museum right next to the synagogue uh, to tell about our tradition. Um, anyway, they both are, are very, very need uh, repairs. So the total amount, I can tell you uh, that it is more than uh, $225,000 for repairs and our community applied for support to the government and they helped us, uh, they say that will help us, uh, a shekel for a shekel. A shekel a, is actually the Israeli coin and it means that if we get by ourselves, if we obtain more than half of the price, they will help us uh, to pay the rest of it. But it is still a big amount of money and we have to do this in this year of 2014. So uh, the community try uh, to make their best efforts to raise that amount of money. And if you want to help with donations, you can do so 
by contacting the KJA, the, K the Karaite Jews of America, on our website, karaite.org. Okay. Um, How old is the Kedar? It is uh, about from the 10th century. Uh, it is very, very old. Uh, okay, so um, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, the Karaite Jewish uh, community is undergoing a renaissance. And uh, a problem that we had in recent decades is that we don't have new rabbis, new uh, religious leaders and communal leaders. So that's why in the past years uh, there is now actually a program for uh, uh, training people, 12 people, to become our new generation of rabbis and uh, religious uh, leaders. And we hope that after this class is finished, there is going to be even a bigger group, a bigger class uh, for uh, uh, graduating a new class. And I can tell you just briefly that the new generation uh, is taking place, is taking, uh, it's the, the uh, uh, they are, um, they, they take care of uh, the, new, the new resources of our community. Uh, for example, we have uh, two projects. One of them is the new Haggadah for Passover with new editions. And the second one is the blessing and songs for the seventh month, uh, which is called in Hebrew Tishrei. And it is including uh, the high holidays plus Sukkot plus Shemini Atzeret. And they all were almost entirely produced by the younger generation. Uh, most of them under the age of 30 years old. So I can tell you for hours about our new generation. Instead, I will be satisfied by telling you uh, a good example of uh, a talented friend. You see this gentleman from the right is our new Mohel. Uh, his name is Maor Dabach. Maor is also uh, a chazan, a shochet, which means ritual slaughterer. Um, he also uh, officiates marriages. I hope I haven't forgotten any of his titles. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and he's also the deputy rabbi of Ramle. Uh, so instead of telling you a lot about this uh, gentleman, I will just tell you, uh, importantly for today's talk, that he does a lot of work, priceless work, uh, concerning the new generation, teaching them Torah lessons and uh, cantorship lessons, Kerai Jewish halacha, and they bring th he brings them together. Okay, so uh, no community is complete without some uh, social and cultural activities. Um, actually, in Israel, especially in Ashdod and in Ramle, there are daily and weekly programs for children and also for teenagers. And I used to, uh, uh, to attend an, uh, wi while I was uh, a teenager and I, when I was a child. And every summer there is the summer camp. We call it the seminar because it is uh, both uh, religious and, uh, and um, for, uh, it is social also at the same time, simultaneously. So they study our traditions and our prayers. They study Kerai uh, Talacha, and at the same time, as you see, they are having fun, like uh, riding camels and uh, hiking the country. And we are, we have also a choir, uh, the Kerai Choir. Is, its name is uh, Makhelat Bnei Mikra. In translation, it is the choir of the Kerai Judaism. Um, and as you can see here, uh, th there are four uh, gentlemen and uh, professional singer. They are singing in a wedding, a Karite wedding. They usually participate and uh, appear. Uh, they have shows in front of the uh, audience in, uh, uh, in our ceremonies, in marriages, and also uh, in uh, circumcision uh, ritual uh, ceremony, and so on and so on. Instead of uh, telling you a lot about them, I can talk, generally speaking, they all do a lot of work uh, of taking care of the new generation. They are teaching them, and they bring the whole community together 
uh, especially uh, in our uh, bigger, bigger uh, concentration in uh, Israel. And we mentioned the New York Times article earlier. Uh, here is Mauda Bach again. He's the, uh, the guy, the, ge the gentleman from the right, the second from the right. And it is true, we are actually undergoing a revival. So in conclusion, uh, we do have some challenges. Uh, with respect to establish our religious rights and involving our youth as well as uh, making sure that we increase our reach to non-historical Karaite Jews who are looking to join our movement. But I can tell you for sure that the future is very bright. And just for uh, the conclusion, I encourage you all to come and visit your brethren in Israel. You are more than invited. And we don't have time for questions. Uh, I would like, but I will let you know that I would like to answer any questions during lunch. And um, Sean is going to lead uh, the next uh, presentation. So uh, thank you all for listening, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.